Jared Poland here, froknowsphoto.com. So you had a chance to look at the slideshow of photos from the Papa Roach concert that I photographed uh, a couple days ago, or at this point, who knows when you're watching this, so that I photographed the Papa Roach show. Very interesting show, as this was the second day of the tour that they were using these new light, a whole new lighting rig. And it's a pretty small venue, and they had in there a huge lighting rig with a lot of lights in the back, um, a ton, you know, a lot of moving lights, uh, which makes it kind of difficult when they're pointing right at you to try and get some awesome pictures and get your exposures right. And just so you all know that this is going to be a little bit more of an advanced talk, uh, less, you know, going back through the details of, um, you know, settings and what each thing means. Uh, you can always ask questions and I will put them down to answer in future videos uh, for the beginners and for the amateurs. Uh, but this is more of the, you know, the straight talk uh, for the more advanced guys that are out there reading the page. So, you know, it's you, when you pre visualize how you're going to shoot a show, you see the lights when you get there and you see how bright they are. And it's amazing how bright they are. But you realize real quick that you you don't have a lot of front light there's nothing in the front everything's basically behind or to the side which makes it difficult to expose uh, and make sure you have enough light in the front the ideal lighting situation is like american idol you they have millions of dollars of lights up on stage maybe a million dollars worth of light who knows but they've got spotlights in the front if every show had a, had spotlights on the artists from the front and then in the back they had all these downlights, it would be so great to expose everything so that you could have the awesome colors in the background and the nice um, nice white or yellowish color on uh, from from the spotlight. But that's not the situation, and you have to deal with what you have to deal with. And this is some of the better lighting that I've seen at a show. So. As I'm talking, you know, I'm going to go through these pictures, and you can see where my settings started, and we'll see where they end. You know, I started at 3200 ISO at f4 at 400th of a second for something like this, and this is just to get a feel because you didn't, I didn't get to, you know, practice with these type of settings before the show, but I did get to shoot the entire show, not just the first three songs. Um, so let's cycle through these pictures so we can watch settings, and as the light changes during the show. You know, I see that happening as I go through, and I, um, I'm always making manual adjustments. I'm shooting in manual here. I am not shooting in aperture priority. The reason I'm not shooting in aperture priority is because the meter would be totally thrown off in the wide angle pictures uh, by all of these lights blinking. Because if I let the cam, you know, the camera's meter is going to read uh, the whole picture. It's going to take a reading, a general reading of everything, and take the 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 basic middle where it feels that your setting should be so I override that I shoot in manual there's one way to get around that you can shoot in spot metering which is gonna meter just for the spot but if people are moving they're constant the lights constantly gonna change and if they move out of the way oops let me undo that <laughs> I hit zero if they move out of the way then your meter is gonna be thrown off and the picture that you get next could be totally totally overexposed where the lights would be perfectly exposed and the person wouldn't be you know a thing to keep in mind is if it says two thousandth of a second you know that it's the wrong setting because uh, you know the lights overriding the meter so I shoot manual I, I start to tweak my settings throughout the show so you know I switch a lot of lenses as you can see let me close tweet deck um, as you can see for something like this I went from shooting with the 24 to 70 Got good framing here. Didn't cut anything off. I'm a good, f big fan of not cutting things off using heads to block lights. But let's go through this a little quicker. Move to a fisheye because Jacoby, you know, has this box and he's directly in the center of the stage. I do a lot of converting to black and white. And that especially helps when there's a lot of fog and a lot of light in the background because you can you can totally um, get rid of the fog when you up your black levels and your contrast. So he jumps into the crowd. Uh, I still have the fish eye on for this. And real quick, I have to change. Hey, look, there are down lights right here, but they weren't very effective for the front of the face. They probably weren't pointed right, but, you know, that they, they, hmm, I don't remember them being so powerful that they really added that much light. Maybe they did, and I just didn't notice it. I just noticed that now. But um, obviously I had to 
quickly change my settings for the crowd. I'm shooting everything in raw. Switch over to the 70 to 200 to get some some shots from a distance, and it makes it. You know, you can see I'm now at 4,000 ISO, uh, 3.5 at 400th of a second. Same thing here, and then we move up onto the stage. I went to 3.2. You can see that's nice. Then here, you know, I went to 5,000 ISO. I'm still at 400th. Why am I at 400th? Because it freezes the action much better. And having the ability to shoot at 400th of a second and get and get quality images at 5,000 ISO is incredible. Um, 14 to 24 lens. I used that because I could get really close. I was on the same level uh, as the stage, which makes it great. Um, look at the framing here. You can see the smoke in the background. You can see the background going on. Uh, so I kind of locked into this as a pretty good setting for most of the show. Shooting straight down. This is more of the 14. I like to switch a ton of lenses to give a lot of different feels throughout the show. But it turned out that the one of the you know the it, the 24 to 70 worked well here, and so did the 14 to 24. It was kind of difficult with the 70 to 200 when the lights were changing to get the settings right. Um, I love color in in shots like this, especially you can. There's no light really affecting my image. Something like this, the backlight. I usually try to use the body to block the, uh, use the body to block the lights more, but it's not bad at all. Switch it to a horizontal. Get these guys in the middle. Let's see what are my settings. Same settings here that I, I've been sticking with. 3.2, 5,000 ISO, and that's, you know, gonna get a much sharper image at 3.2 than 2.8. But I have the ability to shoot here at 3.2 because of the capability of the D3S. Stuff like this, look at that, you keep the feet in there, you have some nice light in the background, fans out very nicely. Here we got some light in the face spilling over, which is great. Uh, moving into the crowd, um, instantly dropped my shutter speed about a stop. I went to 2 50th of a second, as you can see, and I brought it back in RAW, in the RAW file, because I can, because you just have the ability to do that. Catch freezing action here. I went to 640th of a second at 2.8. Uh, I must have saw the lights were changing and, and just dropped that. Or did I do that in the last picture? Nope. Same thing. 2.8. This is 2.8 because I wanted to speed it up because there was a lot more action going on. So, hey, I'm able to freeze him right here. Look at that. He's frozen. He's frozen without any blur. And that's like something you could never do in film because everybody would just blur unless you caught them at the top of their of their game. And this is obviously in color. The 640th of a second helps freeze him. You know, and this takes on a pretty cool, like he's a floating thing. Uh, the lens flare works in this case, you know, but I don't overdo that all the time. Then it's just going for emotion and go, and then switching it up. I can't shoot the same thing the whole show. Um, so here I dropped down the 4000 ISO again. Don't know why, but going for tighter shots with the 70 to 200 something like this finding different angles i mean i could shoot those all day but you know that could get boring and then you got these you know just stuff going on during the show interactions with the other members weird things like this and and i'll mention nothing is cropped here as you this is how everything was shot then you start to get some of these from the side nice lighting in the back the color looked terrible in this so obviously the black and white is solid as shit Really happy with how solid it is. Uh, we, won't, we don't really need to explain this picture very much. <laughs> um, I like to try to show the crowd interaction because um, that, that always works. Settings, same 500th of a second, 3.5. So I'm just switching around as the light changes. You get a feel for it over time. I like this because he's coming towards me. You have, you know... All this in the background. I didn't throw them all the way to the edge with the four, uh, the 14 to 24 because I didn't want any distortion going on. But this is really good. This is really happy with that. Uh, and then he jumped, and you know, I was prepared for that. You can see how quickly it goes through that. And then the bow, right in the middle, right lens, 14 to 24. Didn't know this was going to happen because I've never shot them before. But hey. You know, it works well. And then end with, ending with a fan shot. I could do more of these during the show, but I like to focus in on what's going in uh, on during the show. So, you know, that's really it. That's a run-through of these images. I hope that helps. And that's about it. Any questions, you could always hit me up, Jared. JaredPoland.com. Later.